Okay. Okay. Hey everybody, it's Lisa Quilting in the Valley, downtown LaSalle, Illinois, coming at you with a tutorial, brief tutorial, on the Westerly starter set. So we're going to talk about the kind of tools that you need to do this. The very first thing we're going to talk about is the needles. You need to have a, a new needle. Yes, you do need to change your needles. It makes a difference. And B, you need to have a quilting needle to do this kind of work. Um, there are Microtex universal needles. A lot of people use those. Those are great. Those are for piecing. There are top stitching needles. Top stitching needles are not designed for quilting. They're to do like the outside seams of, of denim or um, thicker things. Top stitching where you're going to see that heavy thread. And then there's quilting needles. Quilting needles are what we need for this particular technique. The eye of a quilting needle is round, and that allows for the thread to come through it and be pulled in multiple directions without fraying the thread. So you want to have a quilting needle. You want to have the right size quilting needle for your thread. I'm using Aurifil thread. It's 50 weight, so I'm going to use a smaller needle. I'm using a 7511. The numbers on the needles, those two numbers, they mean the exact same thing. The 75 is metric, the 11 is imperial measurements. It means the exact same thing. If you were using a heavier thread, you would use the 9014, a big, or yeah, a bigger needle. So that would work for the heavier thread. The hole that the thread goes through is a little bit larger. Okay. Additionally, you need a nice flat surface. So, so steady out in Oregon, manufacture custom tables that go around your machine to sit on a surface. So if you had it on a tabletop, you could use a so steady table with it. They make them for every make and model machine on the market. They cost about $100 to $130, depending on your model and where you get it, to get that table. If you have a cabinet for your machine, you can also get an insert for it so that your cabinet sits flush. You also are going to want a glider. So this is a Teflon sheet, and it's got a self-stick on the bottom there. It's got a hole in it for your thread to come through and then it covers the feed dog and the gaps between the table and the machine so that you can slide your sandwich around easily. You're also going to need your starter set. So in your starter set with Westerly you get the seam gauge which is this. You get the straight edge and the curved edge ruler and you get the foot. Now this particular foot is the Bernina foot but the bottom of it looks just like the Westerly foot. On Bernina, we have solid shank feet, so we can't screw anything to the feet because we don't have anything to screw to. You have to get an adapter to use this. This Bernina foot has the spring here, so if you have a Bernina with the automated presser foot, highly recommend you get the Bernina foot. It works well with the high shank Westerly rulers. Otherwise, for the rest of you that have a shank on your machine that sits there all the time, that you screw your, your feet soles into, you're going to use the Westerly foot, and it is like this. It's about a quarter inch deep, and it's designed for your ruler to slide along it. So if you were to ask me, well, can't I just use the darning foot or the quilting foot, I would tell you no. You look at the difference in the height. So that's going to slide under or over your ruler, and you'll end up breaking a ruler, breaking a needle, and throwing your machine out of time. Okay, so you're using your ruler foot. You put your foot on your machine, and you've got your feed dogs down, because this is free motion work. So you're going to have your feed dogs down, and you're going to lower your foot. When you lower that foot, you want to make sure that it's just lightly resting on the top of that sandwich. You don't want to be able to, you know, slide stuff underneath there without depressing your sandwich. Don't want any daylight showing. So you raise or lower your foot as appropriate to make sure it's just resting on that sandwich. Okay. When your foot is on, <clears throat> your needle, when it comes down, is going to be right smack dab in the middle of the circle that is the foot. That's going to place your needle a quarter inch away from the outside of that foot in every direction. The reason I'm telling you this is because this is what you use the seam gauge for. So I've drawn out using a friction pen and a ruler what I'm going to stitch here. I'm going to stitch a real simple design. But the first thing I want to do is I want to stitch the outside of this. So I want to stitch on that line. I'm going to put my foot right over that corner. 
I'm going to hold on to my top thread and I'm going to needle down and then up. This is a real handy thing to have too is your tweezers. I'm going to reach under here and there is my bobbin thread. So I have my top and my bobbin thread set to come up. When you're doing this work, you want to set your machine so that the needle stops down because you don't want it, your sandwich moving. You want to be fairly precise. Okay, so I'm going to put my ruler right on the edge of my foot. And in order to keep this straight and to stay on that line, I'm going to use this seam gauge. This is the quarter inch part. I'm going to put that quarter inch part right there. And I'm going to line the bottom of my ruler up against that quarter inch part. I have my machine set to about medium on the speed. And I'm going to go ahead and just stitch down that line. Okay, I'm not going to turn my sandwich around. I'm going to use that seam gauge to make sure my ruler is right where it needs to be. Now I'm going to go sideways. Okay, now I'm going to go backwards. And now I'm going to go sideways again the other way. I'm going to go this way. So I'm keeping my hands flat on the surface, a couple fingers on the ruler and a couple fingers on the sandwich. And then I go right back to where I started. I have a nice straight lines and a square, and that's what you use the seam gauge for. Um, when we do some other designs later on, I'll show you what you use the other sides for. So now I'm gonna bring my foot up, slide my finger underneath there so I can catch that top thread, and do the needle down and up thing again. And when I pull this up, there's my bobbin thread again. So I've got my bobbin thread up right where I need it to be. And the reason I do that is because this is another handy thing that you probably want to have. Side threading needles. So I take this thread, I would tie a knot in it if this wasn't a real quilt. Come underneath in between the sandwich with that side threading needle and bury that thread. And there it is. Looks nice and quilted. No thread showing and the back is going to look just like the front. Okay, now I'm going to show you this neat design. I'm going to start in this corner here, and I'm going to use the curved side of this ruler. If you can see, I don't know if you can see, there's a line going down this ruler that's the center of the ruler. I've drawn diagonal lines on my square. I'm going to put that center line right there, on my diagonal line and then there's one two three lines going down I'm lining up the very bottom line with the corner of my sandwich or the corner of my drawn square okay I'm gonna come over here and again I'm going to bring up my bobbin thread use my tweezers to pull that out of there okay and now, using both hands on my ruler and my sandwich, I'm going to go like this, just right across to where I stitched before. Now I want to move up a little bit. So I'm going to do what's called traveling. I'm stitching very carefully along the line that I just stitched until I get the second line on the ruler on the stitch line I just did. So my center line is still on the diagonal line drawn in the box and now there's the second line on the ruler is lined up right on top of the first stitch line I took. Now I'm going to come back. I stop in that outside stitch area and again I travel right along that until I can get the second line on my ruler lined up there. Now I'm going to come back. Okay, I'm going to travel again. 
until I get that second line on there. Come back again. And keep your sandwich flat, that's helpful. A little hiccup there where my sandwich didn't come over flat. Okay. Okay. And now I'm doing the same again, only going back the other way. And I think I should be able to get one more in there before I'm done. Yep. I just have the space to do one more. Okay. So that's the one side. And I just cut my threads there so we can save some time. Now, when you do this design, you want to come and do 180 degrees the opposite side to make sure that you're not twisting your fabric sandwich. I'm not going to bring my thread up this time. I'm just going to show you how this goes. There's the one. I'm going to travel up. I'm doing the exact same thing. Now I'm coming back. Travel out. The traveling stuff gets easier the more you do it. But you're literally just going in the footprint that you already did. The speed at which you move dictates the size of your stitching, for those of you who are wondering. So that is why I recommend putting your speed right at medium and trying to learn to move as smoothly as you can. Okay, now I got that side done. Now I'm going to come over here, I'm going to start on the third side, again the third line is in the corner, the diagonal line is on the diagonal line, travel up until the second line is now on my first stitch line. say out of ruler, I mean my ruler is no longer big enough to span the area I'm stitching. Okay, and now I come back the other way. Almost finished. And here's my last stitch I'm doing across here. Okay, 
and then that is the design you get. So if you look at the design without the marks on it, it's, there you go. That's where I just started and didn't bring up my bobbin thread. So that's why you want to bring up your bobbin thread. But you get the idea with the design. You can see the cross hatch lines, which I will iron off because I'm using the friction pen. That is what that finished design looks like. And if I had taken the time and brought up my bobbin thread, you would not have any little goobers on the back. But that's a pretty design to use on, you know, cornerstones or whatever, free quilt. Pretty easy to do. And if you were using a uh, thread that blended in with your background fabric, it would you wouldn't see any little boo-boos. I have a little boo-boo right there. I have a little jog. But for the most part, that's an easy design and it's a good one just to start off with using your starter set with the Westerly rulers. So, hopefully that helps a little bit. We'll do another ruler on a um, different sandwich, different type of ruler on another video. Thanks for watching.